Hey fifth graders, welcome to science class. We are going to be learning all about how your body converts your the food that you eat into energy that you need in order to play soccer, to hang out with your friends, and do homework, all that good stuff. So it is going to be a bit of a different format today. You're going to still need your textbook. We're going to be looking at page 95 and your workbook pages 67 through 68. This is going to be a three-day experiment activity so you may also need your notebook so before we get started and before i explain the activity for you guys let's go ahead and review what even is a calorie so we see calories everywhere we see them in cereal boxes and canned food even during our school lunch sometimes it tells us that information calorie is basically how much energy we're getting from that food and the abbreviations that you may see are kcal, cal, and just calorie. So when calories enter your body, your body will actually change it into energy that you can use. So the basic math is that if the amount of calories that you consume is the same as the energy that you use, then your weight will pretty much stay the same. If the amount of calories that you eat is more than the energy that you use, then you will gain weight and the opposite is true if the amount of calories that you eat is less than the energy that you use then you will lose weight so this one is just a quick graphic that tells you how many calories are in nuts but that was interesting so it's important to remember that our goal in this activity is not to like play around with your weight or anything like that just gotta keep eating healthy you got you guys gotta grow it's very important to eat of course and calories are so important they're essential because well they help us survive they help us breathe they help us maintain our body temperature it's super super important and the amount of calories that you need depends on every single person so no person will need probably usually most person will not need the same amount because it depends on how old you are it depends on your weight it depends on your height how tall you are if you're a boy or girl all of that comes into play when you're trying to figure out your RMR, the resting metabolic rate. And this is what you're going to be calculating today. So the RMR, like it says here, it tells us basically how many calories we need every single day, All right? Let's see. So let me go ahead and explain this for you. So you're going to be finding out your RMR which is the amount of calories you need and your average daily calories. So how many calories you usually eat every single day. Those are the two things we're gonna be calculating today and next week and this weekend. So the materials, again, you'll need your workbook pages 67 to 68. You need to know your weight and your height and you'll need a calculator. So let me actually go ahead and explain this for you guys by reading our textbook, page 95. So go ahead and open up your textbook. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and read it out loud. You may have heard someone say that food has a lot of calories in it. He was probably thinking about his possible weight gain, but calories in food are actually a measure of the energy available from that food. A food calorie is a thousand times bigger than the calorie that a scientist uses. A food calorie is labeled as a kcal or cal, however, it's usually written just as calorie. Your body converts or changes the calories from the food that you eat into energy that you need for doing work. If the amount of calories that a person eats is the same as the energy that he uses, his weight stays about the same. If he eats more calories than he uses, he tends to gain weight. If he eats less, he loses weight. Other things such as growth, so how how you grow or illness can also affect how many calories a body will need most of the calories that the body used uses are for basic functions such as breathing and maintaining bodily temperature the energy needed for this kind of survival is called the resting metabolic rate rmr which is what you're going to be calculating today so like i said a person's rmr is dependent so it will vary um, on factors such as age weight height gender and this rate can be adjusted or changed based on the average daily activity 
and to show how many calories a person needs each day. So again, um, every single body is different. Everybody needs calories. They're a good thing. There are good calories, bad calories. We already know what kind of food is healthy and what isn't, right? But as long as you are doing your best to give your body the best healthy food, you're good. So what to do? Number one, calculate your resting metabolic rate and adjust it based on your average daily activity. This is what we're going to be doing today. Number two, for three days, record everything that you eat or drink. Might be challenging, um, but I, you have to do it. You can do it. And number three, research to find an estimate of the number of calories in each of the foods and drinks that you consumed. Add the results to find a total calorie count for each day and average the totals to find an average daily amount. And then lastly, you'll compare your average daily calories with your adjusted RMR. So we're gonna be doing number one today, okay? For number two and three, you're gonna be doing it tomorrow, which is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So you're gonna be using the chart on page 68 to record the foods and calories that you eat for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So this is what page 68 looks like, right? I'll go over a little bit more on how to do this after we do page 67. So this is what we're gonna be doing right now. So make sure that you have page 67 pulled up. You do need to know your weight and height. If you're not sure, ask your parents or do your best to remember the last time that you calculated your weight and your height. I haven't calculated that in a very long time. So I'm just going to be using an average fifth grade, a random fifth graders boy, boys weight and height that I just found online, okay? So let's go ahead and do this. Make sure you have your calculator as well. Measure your weight in pounds and your height in inches. Use the math equations to convert your height and weight to metric measurements. The good news is that in Korea, we, we already use metric measurements, so you don't have to find out your pounds. You just have to write your kilograms and your centimeters for height. All right, so our imaginary friend's name is going to be Adam. Just our random friend. We got Adam, okay? Adam weighs 40 kilograms. Again, you're going to be writing your own weight, not Adam's. And he is... 500 centimeters tall. I'm just kidding. He's 140 centimeters tall. Again, the reason we didn't do the math is because we already know our kilograms and centimeters because in Korea we use our metric measurements. Okay. All right. So once you wrote down the kilogram and centimeters, so let's do the next one. Use a calculator to find your RMR. So notice that there are two different formulas for boys and girls. So if you're a boy, of course, use this formula. If you're a girl, use this formula. Since our friend Adam is a boy, I'm going to be using the boy formula. So we got, oh, write down the, the height and the weight here. And you're going to write your age here. So Adam is 12 years old. So we're going to be doing this in the calculator. Adam, pause this video and do the math for your personal RMR. Our friend Adam, his RMR is 1,220. Okay, just use the calculator. So once you found that out, I'm gonna write it here where it says my RMR is, like that. Okay, so once you found your RMR, we're actually going to adjust it. We're going to kind of change it depending on the amount of exercise or a, a, a movement that we do daily. So because of the coronavirus, we're stuck at home. So your act usual activity might be different than if you when you're going to school and doing PE and things like that. So just just try to think about like like the most on a most normal day. So like a normal school day, how much do you move? Okay. So we got three different types: low, medium, high. So low activity is doing less than one hour of exercise. You're just mostly sitting around or reading, playing computer games and things like that. Medium activity is one hour or more of kind of medium light exercise, like walking, kind of running around, playing in the playground. 
And then high activity, usually for the athletes, like people who do bicycling, swimming, gymnastics, soccer, basketball, and not even just athletes. You guys are athletes too. I know we have a lot of athletes. So these are the different types. So you're going to be indicating your type of activity. So for a normal fifth grader or an average fifth grader like Adam, let's pretend Adam goes to BHCS and he does PE. So on a day that he does PE, I would say he is medium activity. Okay, because PE lasts about 50 minutes and, you know, he's probably also going to be walking home from school, things like that. So he's going to multiply his RMR by 1.7. So he's going to do 1,220 times 1.7. So again, use your calculator for that. So after I did 1,220 times 1.7, 1 it got 2,074. Now, level of activity. So you're going to write low, medium, or high, depending on, you, on your personal judgment, medium. My normal activities include, so this is kind of like, kind of tell me like what kind of activities do you usually do per on an average day. So let's say Adam in PE class, what do you guys do? Run around, play soccer during recess, walk to school. Uh, go to jump rope, hagwon, things like that, okay? So of course it will be different depending on your personal experience. All right, and that is it for today's activity. Now what you're gonna be doing on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, don't forget you have to record your food. So you do have weekend homework, but if you find it too difficult or strenuous to write down every single thing do your best to just write down the main dish so for example for adam you could say for example day one is day one is going to be friday right and day two is going to be saturday and day three is sunday all right so for day one maybe for breakfast he eats toast this is what i ate today toast and avocado tomatoes eggs okay then he's going to have to calculate how many calories that is and let's say for lunch he just ate he just a hot a pizza a cheese one slice or too little two slices of pepperoni pizza okie dokie now let's figure out how to find out the calories okay so two slices of pepperoni pizza hop onto google or neighbor average calories one slice of pepperoni pizza so gives you an estimate I know it's not gonna be exact but this is like the easiest way to do it so this is an entire pizza so we just want to know one slice so quantity is like how much so one slice is about 285 okay so we are going to write here just like this okay and yeah, you're going to be calculating all of that. And then we'll add up everything together on Tuesday in our next science lesson. If you have any questions or are confused about doing this, definitely let me know through Google Classroom, email, and things like that. And I'll definitely help you. Okay, I hope that you have a wonderful rest of the day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.